This is part two of Obesity, Why Weight Matters. If you haven't already, do check out the first episode where I explore the causes of excess weight and how we assess it. In this episode, we'll cover the best evidence-based ways to lose weight and manage obesity. How to lose weight is everyone's favorite topic. Everyone has tried it and anyone that's lost a few pounds thinks they have the winning formula until they put the weight back on again. And 80% of us do this within a year of losing it. And we often put on more than we lost. We've all been there. I have a medical degree, an extra degree in clinical nutrition, and this is one of my favorite topics of healthcare. Even then, it's still really challenging to get it right. There's a lot of things we need to think about. These are my top tips for getting it right. Stay motivated. This is a long game. Most of the weight loss, whatever dietary pattern you choose, will happen in the first eight to 12 weeks. And this is the easy part. We get cocky, go off the rails and forget about the harder part, the 12 to 26 week stretch, keeping it going to six months to help have a why or have a goal. In six weeks and six months, I want to run 2K, walk my kids to school, fit into my wedding dress, whatever, but write it down and put it on your fridge and on your bedroom mirror. We need that reminder. The NHS has a 12 week weight loss program that talks about food and provides tips and motivation to keep you going. There's more info in the description below. And there are loads of commercial weight loss programs too. As a general rule of thumb, the more restrictive your diet is in terms of calories, most try to reduce calories by about 500 per day, the more important it is to be mindful of food quality. Nutritionally complete foods are important and you may need a multivitamin supplement if you have a very restrictive diet. You can do this with apps or a food diary. Most of us eat 90% of the same things every week, so you don't need to do it forever. The purpose of this is to gauge what we're eating now, when, how much, and if we have any obvious patterns or food triggers. It will be pretty obvious when you see it written down how we can improve. I always focus on removing obviously unhealthy stuff rather than adding in new things. Those are the quick wins, the sugars, the refined, highly processed foods, the junk food. Removing as much as possible of this stuff is a great start and goes a long way to moving in the right direction. Multi-prong it. I know the tendency is to often look at our diet and go from meat mediocre to perfection. It's just not going to happen. So don't stress so much on the diet. Just remove the bad stuff to begin with and start some regular activity. Aim for two hours a week of exercise, anything that gets you out of puff and slightly sweaty. This is great for our heart and shedding the fat, but we also want to burn extra fat when we're not doing anything. Conditioning or weight training is so important and people neglect this when losing weight. Making our muscles stronger with things like lifting Lifting up our shopping bags or push-ups makes a big difference to how we feel, our energy, and how much fat we burn when we're not exercising. As part of motivation, we want to see progress to stay motivated to continue. For most people, this is stepping on the scale. It's easy for this to get out of hand, so try and limit it to once a week. Having blood tests or monitoring your blood pressure is also quite helpful here. You need a strategy for how you eat and how you exercise. You will fall off the wagon on both of these, sometimes because of triggers like holidays, illness, visiting family, and sometimes you just can't be bothered, but something will derail you and before you know it, Three months has passed and you're back to where you started. This is where a strategy helps, knowing your triggers and what to do when they rear their ugly head. Everyone has a solid plan when they're full of motivation, but when the motivation fails due to a trigger or otherwise, what's the plan then? That is almost always the time when things go wrong. Have a low threshold to start again. Start by just avoiding sugary foods or just walking around the garden rather than a run. It won't take long before you realize how much better you feel and look with a plan than without. If you can stick with this, then it will do the trick. You will literally reverse your disease and give yourself years of extra life while looking and feeling better. If you can't, then there are some drugs that can help you too. I don't prescribe these much anymore unless someone is really struggling or some of the other tools are not agreeable or have failed or someone has plateaued and the advantages of drugs outweigh the risks. Like most drugs, they do work to some degree, but you 
tend to need to take them for the long term. I'm not a huge fan personally, but it does have its place for a small cohort of people. Currently, at the time of this video, there are only three licensed drugs used for obesity in the UK. By licensed, I mean that obesity is a specific reason to use this drug. Tests have been done on this and we know it can work. All of these drugs are generally for the same groups of people with the same aim. For people with a BMI over 30 or between 27 to 30 with other medical conditions and the aim is to lose about 5% of your body weight over about three months. So if you're 20 stones, it's aiming for a drop of about one stone in three months. All of them are recommended to be used in addition to a reduced calorie diet and exercise program. So none of them are replacements for lifestyle modifications per se, rather as additional tools in the toolkit. This one used to only be available from your doctor, but now you can get it over the counter. Normally, if I eat some fried chicken, the fat in the skin and the oil will get broken down by enzymes in my body. With this drug, it blocks those fatty enzymes from working. So if I'm on all a stat and having a bucket meal, then all the fat just passes straight through. It prevents you from absorbing fat, which is kind of cool, but it causes horrific side effects fat in your poo, namely, which is not pleasant. It really acts as a deterrent of eating fatty foods, so an extra tool in the arsenal to avoid fatty foods, really. FYI, some vitamins, vitamin A, D, E, and K, are fat soluble. So if you're not absorbing fat, then you're not really absorbing many of those vitamins. So this can be impaired. A lot of people do try this route, but they tend not to stick with it. You have to take a tablet three times a day, and I already mentioned the poo fat side effect. If you want to try something, this is the easiest one to try and you can start it immediately. One of the problems when we get more obese is that our mechanism to know when we're full becomes impaired and delayed, so we eat more than we need to. And by that I mean the hormones aren't working as well as they used to. They become blunted and desensitized. This drug acts to send a strong signal that we're full so we eat less. It does work and is probably the best drug on the market. As it's relatively new, you can only get this at specialist weight loss services at the moment. If you're interested, do get in touch with your GPs. You'll probably need a referral to get this medication rolling on the NHS. This is a prescription only medication that works centrally on the brain and it aims to regulate food intake and reduces the pleasure associated with food. It's made up of two drugs. One we still use as a treatment to help people stop smoking, i.e. an anti-addiction type drug, and the other we use to stop drug dependent patients and alcoholics to stay drug and alcohol free. These are pretty intense drugs to take, uh, in my opinion, and I'm not a huge fan as a result. Remember, taking any drugs is about the pros and the cons. Be informed and see if it's something that can work for you. There are a host of other over-the-counter tablets you can take like fat burners and appetite suppressants. Currently though, none are truly evidence-based in that they don't have solid trial data confirming the benefits. That doesn't mean they don't work, it just means that we should approach them with our eyes wide open. Definitely, without doubt, none are silver bullets. But if it's something you want to try, then you may find some aspects of them helpful. The narrative has changed a lot over the years regarding weight loss surgery, known as bariatric surgery. There is this trade-off between having major surgery to treat something that could be reversed with diet and exercise versus not treating with surgery and having all the medical risks we discussed in the earlier video. Personal preference is important here, and for some people, surgery is an awesome option, and for others, the last things they would consider. Surgery is probably one of the most effective options for long-term weight loss, and remember, we're primarily concerned with the long game here. Lifestyle measures can be difficult to sustain. We all know this, but once you put a band around your stomach or bypass your stomach or cut out a bit of your stomach, that's a long-term fix. But like any major surgery, it's not gonna be without its own problems. There are different types of surgery for weight loss, but most work by helping you to eat less and feel full quickly, as well as normalizing some of the hormonal function. You still need to eat well, exercise, and have a strategy, including motivation 
question, everything we discussed earlier is key factors in maintaining weight loss. As a general rule, the more obese you are and the more established clinical conditions you have, like diabetes or high blood pressure, and if you've tried and failed some of the non-surgical methods that we've already discussed, then surgery may be a really good option for you. This usually translates as having a BMI over 40 or between 35 to 40 with other diseases. I've definitely seen people's lives turned around, but I've also seen people yo-yo back and forth after having surgery with their weight and reliving the struggles they had before the surgery, not to mention the need for additional surgeries. It's not an easy decision to make, but if you fit the referral criteria, it's an option to consider. Do speak to your healthcare professional to discuss further. When it comes to weight, lifestyle is king. Just be mindful that there will always be life's challenges that make it difficult to optimize our dietary and exercise goals, and we feel like we're going backwards. This is the time to get help from previous things you found that have worked or your healthcare professional. This is the only thing that will help you maintain a healthy weight and a healthy you in the long term. Almost all diets work, but usually for a short period of time. If measured over a long period of time, then most would dramatically fail. You know the lifestyle things that will help with weight, exercise, and diet, but it's more than this. You need to wrap this within a motivational strategy that has actions for when you're on a health high or on a major slump. Along with lifestyle, for some people, medications may be helpful. Do consider the pros and cons before giving them a go, and it's no substitute for lifestyle changes, more an additional tool, if anything. Surgery is one of the most effective options for sustainable weight loss. It's definitely something to consider if you fit the criteria. Speak to your GP to discuss further if it's something you think could help and all other options just don't seem to be working. If you have any concerns about your weight or you want some help, do speak to your healthcare professional. There are loads of options to choose from, including support, motivation, a strategy for the long term, drugs, and surgery. Thanks for watching. Till next time, stay healthy.